I have never done a sketchbook tour before, probably mostly because I've never actually filled an entire sketchbook, like ever. I always get a few pages in and then I start a new one for whatever reason, I have no idea. But what I'm gonna do real quick is cover some of the old stuff that I had done in the past in college and whatnot and then we're gonna jump right into the new stuff to sort of document where I am at right now uh, as far as my drawings, as far as uh, my creativity and the types of drawings I do and just all sorts of things like that. So let's jump right in. So starting with the old stuff, I have only ever done two charcoal drawings before. And these are at opposite ends of the spectrum. We have Michelangelo's Pieta over here on the left and Star Wars over here on the right. But let's talk about Pieta at first. Michelangelo's Pieta is a sculpture that is in the Vatican. And uh, funny enough, it's the only artwork that Michelangelo ever signed. So that's pretty cool. But I always found this to just be a gorgeous, gorgeous sculpture. I've drawn it a couple times, once in pen, uh, just with some hatching and cross hatching. And the other time was this charcoal drawing right here. And my other charcoal drawing that I did in the past was in figure drawing class. Oh my gosh, look at all the charcoal still coming off. Oh, all the... Okay, I guess I never sprayed these down, but this one was for figure drawing class and they just said, go and draw a figure. And you know, I was into Star Wars a lot at the time, so I drew Princess Leia in the gold bikini that we all know, Jabba the Hutt in the background. And that just sort of did a nice abstract, uh, having Jabba back there, but not fully rendering him. And I think it turned out pretty good. Let's get this messy charcoal out of the way. That's why I probably don't draw on charcoal a whole lot anymore. It's because of how messy it got. So then jumping over into drawings. Uh, this one was just in drawing two. We were supposed to draw in a mirror and I did not want to do that. So I just drew from a picture, I think. Um, but yeah, that's that one. <laughs> not much to say there. Next we got House, Hugh Lowry. I uh, really, really enjoyed that show, House, and it was just one of my favorites at the time. So uh, he always had a neat, distinct look, and I thought he was a good subject to draw. And I always started to do this thing, like where I would get through and I'm like, well, what else am, am I gonna draw? There's nothing else to challenge me in this. So I'd kind of just stop drawing right at this point, and I would just move on to a different drawing. I don't know why, but that's just kind of what always happened. Uh, and you can see that in this drawing here too. I, I didn't finish their legs. You know, this is from the movie Shall We Dance with Richard Gere and Jennifer Lopez. And probably the most important thing in dancing is the legs. And after I did this, I was just like, well, whatever. <laughs> so I just moved on to the next thing. I never came back to finish it. And that's pretty much all I really want to show from the old stuff. It's neat to look back, see how I used to work it was a little bit different than I do now. And uh, I took a huge, huge break, by the way. I took like a 16 year break. Um, part of it is because I met a girl, I got uh, super into dancing, I ended up marrying that girl, so story worked out well in the end. And uh, yeah, so now we have the more recent stuff. And what I did right when I got back into drawing, and I actually got back into drawing just because I was bored one day. I was just sitting around the house and it was really nice. I opened all the windows and I was just like, I guess I'll draw. And I didn't really know what to draw, so I drew my hand holding um, actually this little thing right here. Uh, this is just a paperweight, really pretty paperweight, but that's all I was drawing just decided to draw my hand holding this and then uh, this is actually supposed to represent the aurora borealis and because of the whole space thing i was like oh well wouldn't it be cool if i was holding a planet and from there honestly it just kept going well all right i've got this planet but i don't want it to just be the normal planet it'd be, just be kind of boring so i turned the earth upside down and then I started just drawing some, uh, like a big hurricane kind of coming through. Turn this upside down. You can kind of see there's, 
you know, the U.S., there's Florida right there, down Mexico, and you got it. So, anywho, that was what I came back to drawing, and I found out about graphite powder at this point, which I did another video on, on how to get your pencil drawings really dark, and the graphite powder was just such an awesome thing to implement into the drawing. I had used it lightly in the past, but only off of like whatever shavings I had from my pencil already. So this one was a lot of fun. I just kept going with it. I don't even know why I made the world dripping down here. It just looked like another interesting thing. This was kind of a blank space and I wanted to create some more interest. So through the earth dripping. Well, after I started getting back into drawing again, I decided that I also wanted to get into oil painting. Pencil drawing is my true like, passion, so I'm gonna keep doing that, but I wanna learn something new in art. Uh, so I'm going to start painting a lot more. I had a set of paints in the past, but I think those have so since expired, and I don't even remember completing one single piece of work. Now I have actually done a couple, uh, but this is going to be the next oil on paper that I'm going to be doing. Indiana Jones, he's staring at the golden statue, about to flip it with the bag of sand, and he's contemplating what to do. And I, I found that as a really cool sort of still image, just his face and the expression and uh, everything that he's thinking about right there. So I thought it'd be a lot of fun to paint this one, and I will in the future. My wife started wanting to do watercolor whenever I started getting back into pencil drawing, and she wanted me to do watercolor with her, so I did Finding Nemo. I, I love that movie. I think it's just adorable, and the bright colors made me just want to do uh, this movie right away uh, whenever I started doing my first watercolor. Then I just decided to start doing some studies from The Lord of the Rings. Alan Lee was one of the main artists, uh, or the main artist for Lord of the Rings, and there's a book of all of Alan Lee's uh, drawings from Lord of the Rings, and I just absolutely love it, so I just started drawing a couple things out of that. Uh, again here, this is all trees and the ants from Lord of the Rings I really like. This on the left right here is from a Dungeons and Dragons session. We had a lot of fun. This was during the Curse of Strahd. If you play D&D, it's, it's, it's pretty fun. Really big campaign. Uh, over here on the right, these are statue studies that I took photos of, I think between um, the Met in New York whenever we were on our honeymoon, and maybe one of these was at a Smithsonian when we were in DC also on our honeymoon. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I absolutely love that movie. So. I have the Dark Knight here. This is yet another drawing I decided not to fully complete. I kind of got everything proportioned. I like the look of it. And it's a sketchbook, so not everything has to be done, right? So I left it like that. Uh, then I just have a lot of notes and doodles. I have this painting that I'm working on uh, where I'm just doing this big seascape and boat sinking and harpoons into like this. Uh, squid or octopus over here, giant sea serpent. So just kind of thinking a lot of different things through on that one before I get into the painting session. <laughs> this was kind of fun. I was just doodling around. I was playing a video game in there and a little alien guy in there and looked a lot like that. So I just had fun kind of doodling him and making up a little story for this uh, world they call Earth Torn. So I started doing different aliens and uh, stuff like that too. but. Uh, last thing in this sketchbook, I was just actually testing this setup right now. I was testing all the cameras and overhead and nothing ended up working out right during that photo shoot uh, and video stuff, but I ended up drawing this in the meantime just of a hammerhead, a manatee, and a sea turtle. And uh, I, I like the way it turned out. It was pretty cool. I had a lot of fun. It was mostly actually just with a blending stump. Just one of these guys right here was Mostly what I did for all the shading, just one pencil besides that. Lots of fun. This other sketchbook, I ended up really not liking the sketchbook. Uh, everything can smudge so simply in this book because the paper is just so super smooth. There's no like grip to the paper on anything. It doesn't hold on to anything. 
A uh, couple of just different things that we saw at some of the museums. There's a skull of a giant alligator or a crocodile. And then one of the, what are these called, sunfishes? I think this is a sunfish. And I started putting some colored pencil blue around it and then I ended up hating it. So I tried to erase it, but then I couldn't get rid of it. And colored pencils are something that I'm not used to messing around with. So I did a terrible job on this flower that was at the botanical gardens there. And a lot of that uh, rubbed off onto this, um, the Smithsonian Institute, I think. I forget exactly what that's called. And then so I started just taking a little bit more red and putting it in there. And that all came off the back of this one. This, this is where I started to have a lot of fun with colored pencils and started layering them. So this was just the beginning of it. The sky in this painting by uh, Edward Degas ends up looking nothing like the colors that are up here, but I was planning on layering very similar to what I did all throughout here. He has a lot of blues in his painting. And The Four Dancers is just massive, massive painting. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Then we went over to the Lincoln Memorial and got to spend about uh, 20 minutes, uh, 25 minutes or so there sitting and drawing. And it was so funny, all these uh, little kids came up and started going, oh, can I see your drawing, can I see your drawing? And I'm just not used to uh, showing people drawings on YouTube, much less uh, in person. So that was, that was a fun, interesting experience. People were watching me uh, whenever I was at the museum doing that one as well and getting these little crowds around me, but I just put my headphones in because it just, it's a little odd for me. <laughs> And I got to stand in front of this painting right here by Leonardo da Vinci. It's, I'm probably gonna butcher the name, but Genova de Benci, de Benci? Uh, that is in the Smithsonian and it's just by itself uh, in this huge room and you can walk behind it. It's really, really cool. Um, there's, there's this whole back to it that's got these really pretty flowers and uh, a saying on the back as well. And I was so nervous and not because I knew that there would be some people walking past me and seeing me draw, but because I was standing just in front of greatness, it felt so, so different, so unique to just be drawing in front of something like, like the real painting of this. So that was, that was quite an experience. And then the last thing in the sketchbook, uh, we had about seven minutes before we had to leave this spot and I just wanted to get a quick little view of the Capitol, so jotted that down. And these are trees. My wife said, what are those? They're trees. I didn't have enough time to draw an entire building and trees, so the scribbles are just trees. Another fun bit of paper to draw on is the toned paper. So we have toned tan, there's also the toned gray but I usually go for the toned tan paper whenever I'm going to do a drawing like this. And I really like the look, but I don't like the feel of the paper. The paper, again, for me is just a bit too smooth, just like that other paper. And I need something that is gonna hold on to my graphite just a little bit better than something like this. So this is why we're using things like charcoal or the white pencil or the brown, pastels and things like that in this, those work a lot better, I think, on the smoother paper than graphite does. Then we come to my sketchbook, my drawing book, my favorite drawing book. I wrote a little quote in here, to draw you must close your eyes and sing, Pablo Picasso, but I, I heard he, he might not have been the nicest of fellows and uh, not, not a great guy, so I might get, get this out of there, put a different one in there. I like to draw my hand drawing. It's just a thing that I've done over the years. I have probably some very young, uh, maybe 14, 12 year old drawings somewhere in the attic of me drawing my hand drawing. It was just always a subject matter that I had right there with me and could just draw it any time. So I ended up doing that as the first picture in this book to just sort of kick everything off because that's just probably the thing that I've drawn the most. Let's skip a couple pages. We'll go back to that first one. 
If you saw the first videos I uploaded to this channel, you'd see that it was Stranger Things, and I'm a big Stranger Things nut. I ended up loving Stranger Things Season 4, thought it was awesome, and there was this picture, uh, this moment that I was able to just take a screenshot of, of Eleven just reaching out when she doesn't have her powers, and just the facial expression in there, and the anger, the frustration, all that trying to go into one emotion was just a lot of fun to draw. This guy is from Monty Python the Holy Grail. I don't think I did a great job at capturing his likeness. Some people call him Tim. And I just wanted to get a good sketch in here, one that was not as detailed as like the hand drawing, one that I just was a little bit looser on, so that way I wouldn't treat this like this has to be a perfect drawing book and nothing else but perfectionism is going to go in this because that is the type of thing that I would do. So then we have the Joker. I just was upstairs laying in bed one day not feeling well and had just my 8B pencil and I'm pretty sure this entire thing, yeah, this entire thing was done in 8B pencil. I did take the blending stump and I did move it around on his face a little bit. So that was a lot of fun to draw just with one pencil. Recently, we went to the Biltmore Estate. My wife and I live not very far from here. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous place, gorgeous house. Just a lot of fun to draw. It has a very neat Gothic style to it that is not something I get to see very often other than whenever I go here. So I might even, uh, I've considered going, when I go back, continuing this drawing from the same spot so I can flesh it out more and it can be more finished instead of just, again, another tree that's just all sort of scribbles in here. Maybe I do more attention to detail, some of the leaves and things like that with this. My last drawing in here is my personal favorite that I've ever done is this guy. I call this one the Solo Adventurer. And we have our little scuba diver down here inside of his basket that is attached to this giant octopus. I really don't end up knowing what possessed me to want to make a hot air balloon out of an octopus. I had, I think, a lot of different ideas swirling around in my head. But then I started to get the shape of the top part of the octopus and I was like, well, that could be like the top part of a hot air balloon. And then I could have it going down to attach the basket with his tentacles and, and that could be really neat and it's something that's contrast, that's something that's different and unique. I ended up making this uh, just out of my head for the idea and then I used a couple different reference images for this guy for the tentacles, uh, just a couple for hot air balloons in the basket and how that would look. And then just some other random ideas I threw in here that it would make bubbles instead of actually just shooting hot air up. And that's where we get that in there. And so on the right side, you can see that I have a drawing that is started, but it's not very far along. And that's gonna be a seahorse holding on to an umbrella. And I thought that would kind of go with a nice spread to sort of balance this guy out. It'll be roughly about the same size. Won't have, have as much mass in here, but I'm gonna add some bubbles maybe coming down from the umbrella itself and things like that. And that's pretty much it for my pencil drawings. If you wanna see some of my Inktober drawings that I did this year, I was planning on doing all 42 episodes of Stranger Things, but I did just get through the first eight and went on to do these longer form videos for this channel. So I wasn't able to complete all 42, and I have a playlist here on all eight of those drawings that you can check out now.